Thanks for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed the service. Join us in singing, sing amen. Sing, amen, amen, rejoice, amen, glory be to God, amen, amen, sing, amen, amen, rejoice, amen, glory be to God, amen, amen, when the Lord shall come again, let the people sing to God, amen, amen, when the Again. Let the people sing to God, amen, amen, sing, amen, rejoice, amen, glory be to God, amen, amen, sing, amen, rejoice, amen, glory be to God, amen, amen, when the Lord shall come again.
Good morning, everybody. It's uh, a joy to be with you virtually, whether you be uh, worshipping at home, online, uh, or perhaps in, in a small group for house church this morning. Uh, hello and good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, the end of the month. So as you all know, the last Sunday of the month, we meet in smaller groups. So thank you so much for being here with us online. Yeah. And, and for those of you who don't know us, my name is Jack. I'm Amy. And uh, we have kind of a very short, um, I'd say lesson, but really a more of a time of reflection. We're obviously studying through the book of Psalms this year. And I'm going to share with you one of uh, my favorite Psalms, which I've been reflecting on frequently, you know, uh, actually this year. But it was one that even stood out to me a lot last year and, and before that even. I'm going to be sharing from Psalm 131, but before I do that, I want to introduce a little kind of exercise we're going to do together um, later on in this, mm -hmm. and it's called, it's, it partly comes from an ancient practice called Lectio Divina, or a way for us to think about it is really an idea of dwelling in the word. It's a way for us to read scripture in a very reflective and meditative way, and I'm going to give you guys an exercise that you can do, uh, especially in your small groups and house churches right now, uh, as we take communion afterwards and for you to really reflect on the word together as a group. Um, but before we do that, I want to read Psalm 131 and introduce kind of a, a bit of a thought that's going to lead into that. Should we read here from Psalm 131? Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to read first? Yeah. My heart is not proud, <clears throat> O Lord. My eyes are not haughty. I do not um, concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. But I have stilled and quieted my soul. Like a weaned child with his mother, it, like a wee, weaned child is my soul within me. O Israel, put your hope in God, both now and forevermore. Amen. Thanks so much. There's a, a few things that, that kind of stand out to me in this passage. You know, even first on, it's David sharing this psalm. And it's always such a helpful context to remember that David was um, actually, in many people's eyes, would have been quite a great man. He was a, he was a king. He was a man of influence and a man of power. We don't know exactly when he wrote this psalm. You know, some commentators even say perhaps it was when he was fleeing from um, Saul and he was being hunted for his life and kind of defending himself when he says, gosh, my, my heart is not proud. My, my eyes are not haughty. You know, haughty eyes are, are arrogant, lofty eyes, the eyes that are above and look down on those around them. We don't know exactly when David wrote this or, or exactly what the context is, but it's always helpful to remember who it was and when and why they were writing a psalm like this. Mm -hmm. I think for David to say, I do not concern myself with great matters or things too wonderful for me. I think of Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things, you know, belong to the Lord. And it, and it goes on to talk about the idea of there, there are revealed things. Some things are revealed to us and some things are not. Some things God keeps to himself. In fact, quite a lot of things. None of us know what's going to happen tomorrow, the rest of this year or beyond. Mm -hmm. uh, God has revealed a certain amount to us and no more. And in humility, we respect the boundaries he has given us. And we have trust and we have faith. And then it goes on. And this has been a really key and poignant for me. I know for you as well. I, I think we've been focusing a lot on this idea of, of silence, of stillness. Perhaps because we have two young toddlers <laughs> and have had a particular desire for more silence and stillness. But I think just learning to be calm and present in, in God's uh, present, in, in God's presence, if you know what I mean. Not, not rushing and busy and all over the place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when this idea says like a weaned child with its mother, like a weaned child is its soul within me. I remember, I don't even know if you remember very clearly when we weaned out. We have a son who's about four now and a daughter carries it too. Mm -hmm. The weaning process, obviously, helping the child move from just taking breast milk to now no more breast milk. And now it's going to be solids or other things. Um, I remember, I don't remember Karis as well. I remember Elijah. He did not enjoy that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was, that feel, it feels like a violation for the child. It's like violence. It's, it's painful. It's challenging. It's this 
this horrible time of transition for them. But we know it's very good for them. It's needed. It's just a, a part of development. Mm -hmm. David here describes his, his very soul as being like a weaned child within him. Mm. Learn that calm contentedness. Perhaps learn to be weaned off of the things that we rely on that we shouldn't. Learning to seek God's presence. And, and in this case, the child then seeks the mother more out of love and companionship and connection than just for milk and just for mere things. Mm -hmm. Same with God. We can seek him for the sake of love and connection and relationship, not just for the sake of needs. Yes. Yeah. And then the final part, it closes with this idea of, oh, Israel, put your hope in the Lord both now and forevermore. And I think it leads up to that very idea. What, what does it mean to put our hope in God? And also what that doesn't mean. You know, what, what it, it, it challenges us to think, where else do we put our hope? And it's easy for us to be re religious and spiritualize this. And say, yeah, my, my hope is totally in God. But then, but is it really when we're challenged, when we're going through a difficult situation? What, what are the things we find ourselves clinging for that perhaps God needs to wean us off of? that we need to be um, helped to transition, to continue to rely more on God in a practical sense as well and continue to put our hope in him. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you think about some of these ideas, I and mean, especially in this idea of putting our hope in God and other places where we can put our hope and the anxiety and other things that can, can come with that. Yeah. Um, I want to connect this idea of putting my hope in God to the idea of stillness. Um, and I think that's important to me because uh, if I'm not paying attention to the way I live my life, um, if I just go through my day always rushing, always being busy, always my mind thinking about other things and not being able to be still and live in the moment, um, there's so many things that I miss. And um, even if I don't want to, I end up maybe at the end of the day or waking up thinking and, and putting my hope in my plans, in my work, in the way I think about different, um, different situations. And I'm realizing this is, this is so good to just take time and slow down and reflect where is my heart um, because a lot of the time I for myself I can I can do things out of what my what I'm um, what I've learned to do what I feel comfortable with and not think twice why am I doing this thing um, it's easy for me to then I don't know feel feel guilty feel ashamed uh, because I didn't necessarily have time to to really reflect and think about the situation. And I thought, I know best how to deal with this situation. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, yeah, I, I definitely um, can often do that. Yeah. And I'm sure so many of us can, can, can relate in so many ways. Um, and for me, even, I've just been more in touch this last couple of years with uh, just a, a low level anxiety that's kind of constantly there. Or catching myself when my thoughts are running away and I'm just getting really caught in my own mind of thinking about so many different things and noticing I'm just getting really anxious, overthinking and getting overworked about different things. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. ah, the ability just to slow down <laughs> and be calm and genuinely put my hope in God. For me, often it's a, a drive of perfectionism and I'm beating myself up of something I didn't do or could have done better. Or I should have done this and I'm getting worked up and feeling really guilty or heavy. Sometimes I, I see a particular problem and my nature is just to go to quick solutions and do this, do that. And I'm thinking of all kinds of strategies. And what if we did this? And I overthink and I get myself in all kinds of a knot and I'm really stressed and worked up. And the truth is in those moments, I'm not actually putting my hope in God. In states where I'm more calm and present, I put my hope in God by pausing and praying and seeking for God's guidance. When I put my hope in God, I realize, you know what? That wasn't good. I could have done better. I, I could have done more. And often sometimes there's an apology or something else that needs to go and that's good. But I seek God for his grace. And I remember he's perfect and he mm -hmm. forgives me. Mm -hmm. And that's such a peaceful, <laughs> encouraging thing to remember. So what we're going to do now, uh, as we take communion together, we're actually going to read from Titus chapter 2. 
And this is where we want to do the exercise. The Lectio Divina. Lectio Divina, yeah. This is how we want to do the exercise that we introduced to you earlier. And we'll explain it a little bit more. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to read the passage three times. So first, what we're going to do is uh, myself and Amy will take turns reading one time each. And we'll actually pause in, in between. So I'll, I'll read. We'll pause. And we'll pause just because we'll allow a silent moment of reflection. And, and I would invite you at home to do the same. If you're, if you're in a small group, perhaps just take time to sit in silence for a minute or two and allow the word to wash over you and allow yourself to reflect on the words here. And then Amy will read and, and then we'll close this time. And, and then what we'll invite you to do in your small groups is to have a final reading live in your room where you read through the passage one final time and actually go around one by one in your in your group each of you sharing a single and very simple thought of what stood out to you most. And I say simple, try, try to confine it to one to two sentences, you know, three to four max. Um, so you personally reflect. And then the final part of the exercise is as you hear someone share, you reflect back what you heard the person on your right say. So maybe I would share and we'd keep going around in a circle and then eventually Amy would share. And then we'd go round again. I would reflect what I heard Amy share that stood out to her from the word. The next person would share what they heard me say and so on and so forth. So I hope that makes sense. I'll read, quick pause. Amy will read. You can read in your rooms. Each of you share a quick thought in reflection. And then each of you share what you heard the person to your right say. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Um, and you know what? It's great about YouTube. You can pause and rewind if it didn't. <laughs> and if what I said just didn't make sense, then I, I sincerely apologize. All right. So we're going to be in Titus, um, Titus chapter two, and we're going to read from verses 11 to 14. Mm -hmm. So I'll read. We'll pause and then Amy can read. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age while we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. I'll uh, read again. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright and godly lives in this present age. While we wait for the blessed hope, the glorious appearing of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. Dear Father God, um, thank you for your word, Lord. Thank you for your love, your care, your guidance. God, I know we can so often be so busy and rushing around and sometimes just busy in our own thoughts and our heart. And there are so many things competing for our time and attention in the world around us. 
God, I pray that we can learn this, this art, this skill of being still, being calm, being restful in your presence. And that we can hear your voice, that we can hear you as you speak to us, that we can listen, that we can obey, that we can allow ourselves to be guided by you. I pray, God, even as we reflect on this, God, we, we are so grateful for your grace. And we know it is your grace that motivates us to turn away from our sin, to turn to you and love you. And we remember that we have the great hope that awaits us of Jesus returning. The great hope that beyond death is, is eternity with you, eternity in your presence, God. And that what Jesus has done has forgiven us, has redeemed us and has made us your family, a part of your people, Lord, purifying and cleansing us. We are a people eager to do what is good, eager to love you and seek you and be right with you and, and make you known to others as well. God, we, we truly do love you and we are grateful for you. And we are so grateful, Lord, for what you have done on the cross, the ultimate sacrifice, Lord, so that we can be right with you and have this incredible relationship with you. So Lord, we are thankful, we are grateful, we, uh, we love you. And I really do pray a, a special blessing upon all those uh, watching right now, uh, whether alone and or whether in groups and homes, God, wherever they may be, I pray you guide them to deeply and, and even deeper understand your love and your grace and your care. And I pray for those um, in this exercise now, just that the word can really, that they really can dwell in the word and gain new insights from the text and from each other as well as they discuss and reflect and think. Lord, we thank you so much. We pray in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Have a fantastic time, everyone. Happy Sunday. See you all soon.
desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. Drench my soul, mercy and grace unfold A hunger and thirst, a hunger and thirst With arms stretched wide, I know you hear my cry Speak to me Like a rushing wind, Jesus breathe within. Lord, have your way, Lord, have your way in me. Like a mighty storm stirred within my soul, Lord, have your way, Lord, have your way. said you weren't beautiful and that you didn't belong in your own skin who said you were all alone and that you're never gonna find love again so many little words so many little lies that have followed you all of your life looking for the truth look into your eyes and you'll see been there the whole time Ooh, even when you were running even when you were hurting never been a moment that you were not perfectly loved when you barely believed it when your eyes couldn't see it every single moment you've always been perfectly of the infinite as the wounds of the world became his see the kindness heaven has for you and now he's always been drawing you Perfectly loved when you barely believed it. 
Always been.